and welcome to a rather airy beech grove garden. Autumn has certainly arrived, but with it will come a feast of colours. Acer's just on the turn, the spireas are just in the turn, but there's still flowers. There's a wonderful yellow hot poker just over the fence here. And how about this one for beautiful autumn colour? This is the Cryptomeria japonica elegans. And well, if you like rich red colours, then go for the Cornus alba. You know that saying, nature... <laughs> For our garden visit this week, I've come to a spot between Pitlochry and Glen Shee, where 950 feet above sea level, and there's not a lot of fertile land around. It's bare hills and peat bogs, a wee bit of green grass down in the valley bottom there. But look at all the wonderful vegetables and fruit growing here without any shelter. It's absolutely remarkable. Look at these lettuce. I want to know how they do that. Would you look at these carrots? Wow! And the man at the other end of the fork is Cameron Thompson, who with his partner Moira, responsible for this whole business. How do you do it? Rock, dust and compost. Oh, <laughs> you'll have to explain a bit more than that. Compost for a start. Compost is Dundee compost. Oh, well, I thought I'd recognise it, because we were there several weeks ago and saw it made, made the discovery. Friends of the earth believe it's the best municipal compost in Britain. Ah, so you bring that in and it goes on the top of the natural soil. The compost rock dust is a few inches deep on top and of the, the natural soil. Presumably this stuff that you gave me to carry. This is the quarry stewer. It's the last bit of the whole quarrying industry. I find it difficult to find a use for. There's almost many breeze blocks, concrete blocks, yeah. or flagstones well, that exactly. you can make yes. out of that stuff. But when you put that onto the soil... We put on 78 plus minerals and trace minerals. Right, right. And the, the fine dusts, uh, the worms eat it immediately. And what comes out the back end of the yeah, yeah, worm yeah, is yeah. the microorganism, yeah. the remineralized microorganisms. Yes. The grit weathers it over takes, takes so, long, so long. many years, so when you put this stuff on as a fertilizer, it's once every five or ten years, and that saves a lot of fossil fuel. Uh, well, well, absolutely. Spraying so you're fuel. using recycled materials, you're using compost. Yeah, to grow and you're organic. you're counteracting some of the nasties in our atmosphere. Well, you bind up all the chemical toxins in the soil, Aye. radioactive toxins, heavy yeah. metals yes, in the soil, yes. Aye. plus it takes carbon out of the atmosphere to stabilise climate change. Well, that's enough for that's the moment. Another, that's another, that's a whole already. other thing. <laughs> <laughs> Moira, since I come here, I've been staring at these wonderful vegetables. I mean, they look terrific. Do they taste as good as they look? They do. They, well, that's your opinion, of course. Is <laughs> there other folk to prove that? Well, the local chefs that have made our produce have said that initially when they first cut the produce open, yes. they can really smell the aroma compared uh -huh, to the normal uh -huh, produce uh -huh. that they buy. Have you been flavour too, obviously. Well, that's the other point, yeah. of course. They taste as good as they look. Mm -hmm. Now then, what about shelf life? Do they, do, have you noticed, do they keep better or longer? Well, that's what I really mean. We've uh, still got tatties from last year to show you. Really? That are good enough to eat. They're My, not dehydrated and, and, you've, and you've got tatties here, yeah. this year's crop. This is, yeah. um, this is our Pentland Beauties. And they were grown in a terrace that's in its eighth growing season and we've added no fertiliser since day one. And it's still producing bumper nutritious crops year after year. We're astonished. And that's it's not hollow inside. It's enough. lovely, uh -huh. good old fashioned tatty texture. Tomatoes, um, they, they go off quite quickly, don't they? But you've got, you're trying them with compost and trying them with just the native soil. Uh, any any difference so far? With the rock dust added, no difference, no. no. If the rock because dust wasn't there, there would be a difference. And I feel that the future of this, uh, in the very short time I've been here, is going to be if it works on the native soil, which everybody's got a bit yeah. of. And we have terraces here to prove you can do that, yeah, just yeah. the soil with rock dust. Now then, Cameron, is this the right time of year to be putting the rock uh, dust on? This is autumn. It's the best time to put it on. You get uh -huh. autumn followed by spring microbial activity and you get results. Yes, mix, yes. Mix and, and do you have to work it in? Fork it in, rake it in, yeah, hoe it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The worms take it in. And I suppose the amount you put on uh, will determine how long it lasts. How long it Is that, lasts, is that yeah. right? 
eight pounds a square yard the last ten years. Really? Yeah. Is that right? Now, you, we've seen a system where you're actually making soil using the compost and then the rock dust. This is just putting on the ordinary soil and then the rock dust. Um, is this the way forward, really? Well, farmers would never put on four or six inches of compost. No, the cost of transport alone yeah, would probably... Yeah. Uh, I mean, they could put on a quarter inch yeah. compost <laughs> or a green manure <laughs> crop <laughs> and uh, the rock dust. End of day, um, how do you validate this? Well, scientists from Glasgow University and other scientists are monitoring the mm -hmm. 64 research mm -hmm. plots mm -hmm. on the other side of the road, mm -hmm. 95,000 pounds worth of research. So these are part of your splendid collection, Faye. When From last year, when from 2003, planted? June the 13th. <coughs> and they were harvested in September. 2003? Yep. That's incredible. And we've kept uh, them in a cardboard box wrapped in newspaper uh -huh, to take to uh -huh. our displays that we do. I mean, the thing that impresses me is the fact that, OK, they're a wee bit, wee bit wrinkled on the surface. No more may, say than me. And, and, but, uh, they're but they are solid. There's still going to be very little waste. You could even eat them if you were desperate enough, but we've got this year's now, so Magic. it's just to show you the shelf life, how incredible it can be. Well, they say that if you have a healthy soil, you have a healthy planet. I can tell you this, we've got healthy soil here. This has been a revelation. You might think this is the glen of plenty. It's not, it's actually the Seer Centre, Enoch Du in North Perthshire, open from the 1st of April to the 31st of October. It's a must.